different people who have different culture and background. Sometimes we get along and then money at that time. We disagree with them. However, a discussion like ours today between a Muslim person and Christian one is a good example of how ideas can be closer. In the name of Allah, the God Almighty, the kind and the merciful, sisters and brothers, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you with the, with the Islamic greeting. Assalamu alaikum. May God be speak with you. We are grateful to Dr. Thomas for this offering, this chance of the discussion entitled the, is the Bible the Word of God between Mr. Ahmed Didat and Buster Stanley. It's, it's Mr. Didat's first trip to Sweden. Many people referred to him as a doctor or professor or a lama. But Mr. Didat didn't have a chance to go to college. So I'm here to inform you that he is not professor or doctor or alama. He is a self-taught, a self-educated, a self-alama of the Bible. Brothers and sisters, he will share his experience this evening with you, inshallah. He is accompanied with two of his students. I would like now to give the microphone to Price Thomas, who is the chairman of this evening. So, in the name of the Christ, I also want to wish you all welcome tonight. I would like to present to you Pastor Stanley. I am sure many of you have heard of him. So, maybe m many of you have seen him before. He is the pastor of the church here in the Stockholm home and has lived here in Stockholm home for many years. But he has also lived in many Muslim countries and he is well known for helping out Muslim, socially and medically. Now, I would like to ask you those who have questions to line up to ask your question. 
and our guest will be kind enough to answer them. We ask you, dear audience, to make your question as precise and short as possible. I hope you will feel really welcome. Good evening. Assalamu alaikum. May God's peace be with you. Before I start receiving your questions, I'd like to present Pastor Stanley, something that the most valuable thing that I have. And this is the holy book. As we Muslim call this book the last testament. And of course, the pastor will challenge me as we know about the Old Testament and we know about the New Testament. But we haven't heard of the Last Testament. As you know, that's why I'm here, to educate people about that. If there is such a thing known as <coughs> an Old Testament and it's there is such a thing known as a New Testament, there is also such a thing called the Last Testament. This Last Testament happens to be Quran. And I present this to Pastor that maybe in his later life, as life go on, that this book of God might have some chance <clears throat> might have some chance to win his heart. This book is like an <clears throat> encyclopedia. You can't find any information about anything. So, so I will be glad to receive your questions now. My first question is very easy. I would like to correct Pastor Stanley as he said that the Bible was written in Hebrew. The Bible was originally written in Greek. But this is out of my question. Pastor Stanley, you talked before in a very funny way about the Quran treated women badly. I would love to remind you in the Bible called 18, talked about the woman as being her master, her husband women were mentioned as being her master and that if a woman is not having a fine clothes or not having a good manner or at any question she wants something she must have to ask her master that is her husband now call the explain to me how could the uh, how could the bible in so many places treat the woman as being slapped and as a subject to her master. While you made the laugh of the Quran mentioned in a case after first talking to her gently, second warning her, and third bit her in a gentle way. That's the way the husband supposed to bit his wife, not mistreat her. Could you tell me why you mentioned the Quran as anti-woman while the Bible in many places as I mentioned is very almost selfing the woman. In the Quran, it says about one man who was beating his wife, and that is the man the Bible was speaking about his. His name was Jock, and when he was beating his wife, the Quran says as an example how to do it. Let me tell you, if the Bible talk about the wife should listen to her husband that in the high level of conversation. And in the context, it says, the wives submit under your husband and the men give your life for your wives. And then it means do everything possible to come together in complete understanding.
My name is Vita. First of all, I would like to tell Pastor Stanley, God bless you, and to all of you, my, may love be the first and uh, the last word. I want to ask you, Mr. Dedat, you said Quran is the last testament. How can you think that a God is lying and that can see us in the very minute and have seen uh, us since Muhammad dead and Jesus dead to take to us throughout other prophets? Why do you say the last uh, testament? Because if testament finds human being having experienced how a God have spoken to them, and I have experienced that during 70 years. I have written a whole library about a love of God speaking today. We Muslims claim that this is <clears throat> the last testament because it answers all your problems, whether it's, whether it's spiritual or not. I can guarantee that this book answers your problems. And now this is what Jesus Christ has promised you in the Bible. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ <clears throat> is telling his followers many things to say unto you. But he cannot bear them at now. Jesus, Jesus God had given him guidance for humanists uh, to judgment day, but the people he has been addressing his immediate followers. They were not fit to receive the message. So he said, I have yet many things to you, but you cannot bear them. How weak they were, but they're but when he, the spirit of the truth, will come, he will guide you into all through. For he shall not, he hold, for he shall not speak for himself, but of what thing shall he hear? That shall he speak, <clears throat> and that is too clear. He shall declare for you. He shall declare for you, and above of this. He shall announce me to Jesus Christ now, whose this spirit of truth we Muslims claim that Muhammad is that spirit of God, of truth, and we are prepared to reason with you. I know this pretty well, and I am pretty ready. By heart, it's natural, but let's come, let's talk together, let's reason together. The Bible says, come, let's reason together. The Quran says, بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل يا أهل الكتاب تعالوا إلى كلمة سواء بيننا وبينكم ألا نعبد إلا الله. Tell them, tell them Jewish and Christian, come to one word. That when come to common terms, the commentator said, in turn number one, we should worship no one but Allah. We shouldn't worship men, elephants or snake. And the Bible said, God is the Spirit, and we should worship Him. God Almighty, the only God that exists, and those who worship should worship Him. In the Spirit, not in form of shape, in size. That we Muslims claim that this is the last testament, because it answers all problems, and because, <clears throat> and because Quran says, and applying to you, Jewish and Christian, let's, let's come together in one common platform to worship the one and only God. And this book testifies what Jesus is that Christ. And in the first testament, it says, Be love, be life, not every spirit, for many spirits, false prophets have got into the world. It continues. The spirit that, confu that, the spirit that confessed that Jesus is Christ is the spirit of God. This spirit is a synonym of a prophet. So the prophet that says that Jesus is the Christ of God and who said this Muhammad is the only non-Christian faith 
after Jesus who claims and speak to the whole world that Jesus is the Christ and who made us to say that Muhammad and whoever says so that is from God. To sum up, we hope that both sides were able to make their points of view clear for you. Thank you for your time and we hope to see you. hungry he doesn't he feeds you but he doesn't he's not fed he doesn't need the things that we need broiled fish and honeycomb are not his diet he was hungry and seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves he came if happily he might find anything thereon hungry man happily Ooh, I see the leaves there and when he came to it he found nothing but leaves why for the time of figs was not yet, it was not season yet. I don't know what fruits grow here in season here, what season, in summer, I don't know. But let's say you give me a name, plums, plums in May. And I come here now, I heard about this kind of, your, your Swedish plums, for example. And I come here and say, I want your plums. He says, Mr. D, Dad, this is midwinter. We don't have plums in winter, you should have come May, June, July, you know, summertime we get plums. Well, I can make that mistake. You can make that mistake. Expecting fruits, you come to South Africa, I speak about the beautiful fruits we have there, and you come out of season, I say, those leeches, leeches. I says, hmm, leeches you get December time. If you came in June, July, I said, hmm, season, what is not in season? But God Almighty, he ought to know what is in season, what is not in season. Or you don't have to be a God. If you have some common knowledge of your country, pastor, you would know what grows in season, what is out of If it is out of season, you have no right to expect fruit from a fruit tree. No right! Because your father made it, God Almighty. He made that fruit tree and he made a certain law. In certain season it will bear, certain season it won't bear. You expect fruit out of season because you're hungry, you lost your bearings. And now when there are no fruits, you curse the tree that it should wither and die for following God's law, your father's law. What kind of behavior is this? Irrational. Gods don't do that. Even sane people don't do that. I can't believe that my master Jesus could have done destroying a fig tree because it didn't bear fruit out of season. I can't believe. I can't accept. So if you tell me this is the word of God, the word of Jesus, no, no. This is somebody who has misunderstood and I can give you an explanation how it happened that it got into the book. That that's besides the subject now. God Almighty, Jesus, if he is God Almighty, he is a powerless God, in inverted commas, powerless. Jesus said, this is, what said, this is what he said, he said, I can of my own self do nothing. You know what's nothing? Nothing is nothing. He can do nothing of himself, his own power, he's got no power to do anything. John chapter 5 verse 30, sir. He does say, all power is given unto me, is given to him. I can give you a general power of attorney to act on my behalf. You can do what I do. You can sell my property if I give you the power of attorney. So he says, all power is given unto me. It's not mine. 
The power is given to him, it's not, it belongs to God. He can take it from me and give it to somebody else. That's his business, his prerogative. And then, I give you something, if you remember this, you can win a Bible quiz. You can win a Bible quiz. The shortest sentence in the Bible. Shortest sentence, only two words. Remember this, anybody, a quiz is the shortest sentence in the Bible. If you remember this, you can win a quiz. The heading here is a weeping God, a God who cries, in inverted commas. Can you imagine God crying like a baby? <laughs> but, but this is what I'm reading, John chapter 11 verse 35, sir. So I don't know whether he's hearing. John chapter 11 verse 35 Jesus wept that's all he wept you know what's the occasion Lazarus Lazarus his friend had died you see the greatest miracle of Jesus was not turning water into wine he made another false charge against me by saying that I said that Moses is greater than Jesus that's another lie I want you to prove that, that I said... I can. You have your ten minutes, sir. <laughs> Remember the words? Remember the words that I said that Moses was greater than Jesus. Remember the words. That's, that's, a, that's what you said, sir. So I take exception to that. I said, I never said any such thing. I know it's not in my mind. I never think like that, that I would talk like that. Ha! Huh. So the greatest miracle of Jesus is, we all will have to acknowledge his giving life to the dead. This is the prerogative of God. Only God can give life, he takes life and he gives life. The reason why I'm talking like this. Then he says, Lazarus, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus came out after three days, perhaps thinking from his grave. He says, Hallelujah. Alhamdulillah. Hallelujah. This is praise be to Allah. That's what it means. Ya Allah, who? We say the Christians are hallelujah. Same. We say, praise be to God. Where does Jesus say he gave life to Lazarus? He's telling you, and he says, look, I don't want these people to misunderstand God. In inverted commas. God in inverted commas. If Jesus is God in inverted commas. He saith, he, Jesus, he saith, I thirst. You know, I'm thirsty. By God, I am. Thirsty. Jesus is, so God is thirsty. He said, I'm thirsty, I'm drinking. I'm thirsty. 